Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me in this workshop on active listening. Um, so today we're going to be talking about active listening, and uh, we're going to try to form a working understanding of what active listening is and what it looks like. We're also going to try to understand the difference between listening and hearing. Um, hopefully after this workshop you'll understand the importance of active listening and the distractions that you'll face as a student and discover some techniques for employing active listening inside and outside of the classroom. So what is active listening? Active listening is fully concentrating on what the speaker is saying with the intent to retain that information. Uh, it involves actively employing techniques in order to fully understand the speaker, uh, as well as showing the speaker that you're engaged in what they're saying and are con uh, consciously interpreting their message. And it also involves responding appropriately and thoughtfully to the information that's presented to you. So essentially, active listening is being aware of the person that's speaking to you or you know, speaking at you and showing that you're paying attention and actively paying attention and then taking what the information that the uh, person has given you and using it. So before we talk more about active listening, we're just going to step back for a second and discuss the difference between hearing and listening. Uh, and so hearing is physiological, it just happens naturally. Uh, listening is psychological, meaning you're interpreting what you're listening to. Uh, hearing is you know, simply perceiving sound through your ears, while listening involves a conscious act that requires assessment and understanding. With hearing, you hear things because of the sound around you, but when you listen, you are attempting to gain information and acquire knowledge. And you know, one simple way to think about it is hearing is a trait, whereas listening is a skill that can be practiced and improved. So why is active listening important? So it's a vital skill for students to develop in college, and it has applications in the classroom and out of the classroom. Uh, and obviously it has applications you know, well into the rest of your lives. So active listening allows you to retain the information spoken to you by you know, faculty, advisors, parents, and peers. Uh, it'll help you stay engaged in lectures where you would otherwise lose interest. It'll help you build rapport with faculty, peers, and employers. Uh, it'll help you perform better on exams and homework and will help you take more thorough notes uh, and more useful notes in class. So I've just outlined a few areas where active listening is important outside of the classroom. And so maybe uh, when you're meeting with your student financial advisor or a success coach, they're giving you all this information on you know, how to plan for your uh, future academic career. And you need to be able to retain that information. That's really important. And so uh, active listening is really important for that. Or say you're getting instructions from your employer. Uh, you don't you know, want to make them repeat themselves a bunch of times. So that would also be really important to just hear it once and get it. Also, if you're speaking to your professor in office hours, you want to show that you're actively you know, taking in the information that they're giving you. And so uh, it's really important in that instance as well. And also in completing group work with your classmates, you know, you want other people to uh, make sure that they feel like they're being heard. Um, so there's some obviously distractors to active listening as well. Uh, one of those being phones and internet and social media, possibly nearby conversations and distracting friends. Uh, if you're stressed out or hungry, it can uh, take you out of the moment, make it really hard to pay attention and listen to someone. And also, you can distract yourself by sort of getting lost on a daydream or a tangent or something. So these are all things to watch out for when you're trying to actively listen to somebody or something. And uh, you know, part of active listening is consciously avoiding these distractors. So this first set of techniques is going to be for active listening and conversations. And so uh, generally active listening is mostly taught um, for you know employers uh, or speaking to your employers and it's about uh, engaging in conversation. And so generally the techniques for active listening revolve around conversations, but they can be employed in the classroom in regards to uh, your professor, but these ones are specifically for conversations. So the first one is going to be restating and summarizing. And so when you're having a conversation with someone, um, especially if you're receiving instructions, one of the really helpful techniques is to restate or summarize what the other has said. So when you're summarizing someone else's thoughts, it's really helpful to put it in your own words 
to make it more memorable for you. Uh, and you can start that off by saying, so what I'm hearing you say is yada, 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 or so my next steps are blank, blank, blank. This is really helpful. Say if you, you know, were seeing your success coach and you were trying to uh, change your major or something, you know, and obviously that would take a few steps. And so my next steps are to, you know, go talk to the academic coordinator, then go on e-line or, or whatever the case is, right? And so that would uh, help you. And if they heard something wrong, then they could correct you, uh, which is really important. <laughs> um, or if you had it right, then that would help cement it in your mind. Um, Another helpful technique is giving feedback and clarifying, and so when you give feedback, you're letting the speaker know your thoughts on the information that they've presented, and so instead of just saying whatever you're thinking, giving feedback includes taking their points of view into consideration and responding thoughtfully. So this is really important, say, if you're meeting with your faculty uh, member in office hours, you want to let them know that you've digested what they've said and thought about it and have uh, given a clear response. And so this helps the speaker know that you're listening. Uh, it, it will help build rapport. You know, it'll make it seem, or well, it will be that you are actually paying attention to them. So that's good. Uh, and that's, you know, a lot of the times a pretty important part of uh, building relationships with your faculty members. Clarifying is when you ask the speaker if you understand their thoughts or instructions correctly. So um, when you give your thoughts or are clarifying areas that you're unsure of, it lets the speaker know that you're invested in what they're saying, and that helps build trust and appreciation. Now, another helpful tool in active listening is to use things called minimal encouragers or uh, validation. So minimal encouragers, and a lot of people do this without really knowing that there's a name for it, but they let the speaker know that you understand what they're saying and it encourages them to continue. And so the general ones are just saying, okay, or uh-huh, you know, just to let the person know that you're listening. The more specific you can be, uh, the more invested the conversation the speaker will be and they'll believe that you're more invested as well. Um, and so those would be if they're telling a story or something, say, and then what happened, you know, then, okay. Or saying, I understand to, uh, you know, what they're asking of you. Validation is a little bit different. That's when you are listening and you're um, letting the speaker know that you're empathizing with what they're saying. And so this is a, you know, might be a little bit more geared towards uh, speaking with your peers in a group setting or something along those lines. Uh, but it's it's essentially listening uh, and letting the speaker know that you, you know, have an open mind uh, and that they can say their piece. So one of the key aspects of active listening and what that can help you do is ask more effective questions when you're having a conversation with someone. And so once the speaker's finished, it's important to ask the right kind of questions that will either continue the conversation or get you the information that you're looking for from the speaker. So if they never, if they didn't answer your initial question, uh, you can attempt to rephrase that or segue off of something that they already said. So you know you could say, oh, about you know, whatever you were talking about earlier, uh, could you clarify this point and this point for me? Or I need a little bit more information on, you know, X, Y, and Z. And so the more specific you can be, uh, the better information you'll get and the more specific of an answer you'll get. Uh, and, you know, it, the it's better, it's the best if you can reference something that they've already said and that shows them that you were listening and that you just need a little bit more information. And so that is a really good uh, tactic when you're having a conversation with someone, be it a professor, be it a success coach, be it your, you know, a uh, student, be it a tutor. Um, but lets them know that you were invested, you were listening, and you just need a little bit more clarification. And, you know, people are more than happy to uh, help in that instance, as long as they know that you were paying attention in the first place. So now we're going to cover some techniques for active listening in the classroom. So this first technique is to find the subject interesting. And so a lot of the time, the difference between a lecture that bores you and one that interests you is your mindset. So hopefully you can choose to look at the lecture as a way to discover new knowledge. Uh, or if it's something that you've learned before, you could use it as a chance to refresh what you've already learned. If you are totally dead set on the idea that the lecture is going to bore you and you don't care, you're going to have a difficult time retaining any of the information. Um, 
you know, you'll sort of check out and it'll be really hard for you, even if you know the information is going to be on a test or something, to try to focus and retain any of what's being said to you. So from a pragmatic standpoint, you know, at the very least, uh, you can look at the class as a means to an end. Um, and in that way, hopefully it will be interesting enough to you uh, in regards to your goals after graduation, right? So I need to listen to this lecture so that I can do well on the test, so that I can advance to the next section of this course and get my degree, which will help me go on to do whatever I want in life, right? And so uh, that, you know, it, even if you're struggling to find the subject matter interesting, you can at least make the terms of the course and the terms of listening uh, to the professor interesting to you. And so that's really important because if you do just check out, uh, then it's going to be impossible for you to remember or recall any of the information that was said during the lecture. So once you've decided to be interested in the course or found it interesting for you, uh, it's really important that you remain engaged and keep your mind from wandering and daydreaming. And so one of the best ways to remain engaged in the classroom is to participate you can either answer questions the professor asks or ask your own clarifying questions, and that will really help you remain engaged and keep you focused on the conversation at hand. And I know that for me, this was sort of a big uh, realization, and it seems sort of obvious, you know, but, uh, you know, if you are actually being engaged in the conversation in class and listening to the professor and answering questions, you will, class will go by so much faster if you're not just sitting in the back watching the clock tick away um, and actually getting engaged will uh, you know it has a lot of benefits right you'll be excited to go to class the time won't drag on you'll be more engaged in the discussion you'll prepare more for lectures uh, so that you can keep up and stay engaged with the course you'll do better in the course uh, you know if there's not a participation grade you'll be able to remember more of the things that um, the professor said and that your other classmates said and so you'll do better uh in the course and you'll get to know the professor better which is really important um you know when it comes time to ask for letters of recommendation or for ideas for internships or things like that uh if you've built up that rapport with your professor uh they you know will be more than happy to help you out uh you know generally the professor will help you with a recommendation even if you didn't speak up too much but it uh you know as opposed to you having to remind them that you're in their second period biology class, they'll be like, oh, hey, Eric, uh, you, we had a great conversation earlier in class today. So, uh, you know, those are the, that's the sort of difference that you're looking for, right? And perhaps you might get a better, uh, more helpful letter of recommendation in the latter case. So another technique to uh, employ while you're active listening is to try to identify the main ideas as they're being presented. And so this will also help you remain engaged in the lectures because you're focusing on the content. And so um, we all know that from time to time, professors will get on tangents or sort of discuss things that aren't specifically related to the content of the course. And that's just sort of a fact of life that we live with. Uh, and so being able to identify the main ideas of the lecture themselves will let you listen more intentionally. And it will also make it easier when it comes time to study. So you can uh, look at your notes and be able to identify the crucial information from the tangential information. That way, it'll help you focus your notes, uh, your studying for exams, and also your participation, right? So you'll be able to answer questions or ask questions that are more related to the, the topic of the conversation as opposed to these sort of extraneous ideas. And you know, it's not always the professor that always that uh, brings in these tangential. Uh, lines of thought. Other times it's your classmates or uh, current events or what have you. Uh, but constantly thinking about what the purpose of the lecture is, uh, where it started and where you think it will end up. All of those things relate to what the main ideas will be. And so you can, you know, look at different sections of the lecture. Uh, you know, what was the main idea of this first section of the lecture was the main idea of the last section of the lecture. What's the main idea of the lecture overall? Uh, why is the professor bringing this to our attention now? And uh, how does that relate to perhaps our exams or our papers or homework or things like that? So all of these things are good to be thinking about uh, while you're having the conversation. And obviously you don't want to be thinking about this so much that you don't actually hear the lecture, but 
uh, you know, <laughs> well, it's just a good idea to uh, have in mind as you're going along. Another key aspect of active listening is taking notes during the lecture. And so what this in, what's important about this is that you're taking the information that you've heard and transferring it into your notes into something that you can view later. And so obviously this is really important because if you aren't listening in the first place, your notes are not going to accurately reflect the information that your professor is providing. And so you've probably come to realize this already, but different professors have very different lecture styles. Uh, some use PowerPoints, others write down every single thing on the board that they say, others just write a few key words or phrases, um, and only others will just have a good discussion. I know when I was an undergrad I had all types. I had ones that came with PowerPoints prepared and copious extra uh, pieces of information for us. Some professors would write a bunch of stuff up on the board and eventually get to it throughout the lecture, and I had a fair number of professors that wouldn't use uh, any sort of instrument at all to uh, write down information and we just sort of had to take notes as it was coming and so uh, you know it'll be important to recognize this early on with your professor and then tailor your notes um, to that re in that regard and so usually uh, you want to use the notes that work best for you, what you know you can follow along with, and what you know will provide the information to you in the clearest way possible. Um, and so, you know, you want to tailor your notes to the lecture style. And so if your professor uses PowerPoints, it's probably a good idea to print out the slides in that little format that has the note section on the side and uh, follow them along that way. If your uh, professor has spoken lectures, then that's really where that uh, main idea uh, identification comes into play, right? So if you can identify when your professor is on, you know, on onto a new main idea, then that'll help you break apart your notes and uh, follow along more succinctly that way. And also, will keep you know all the extraneous information out of your notes and keep it from uh, getting too cluttered. So uh, we mentioned this a little bit earlier, but it is really important to get to know your professor. And active listening is key for this, right? So you really want to be able to show your professor that you are engaged in the discussion, you are interested in what they have to say, you're interested in the subject matter, uh, and you're interested in critical thinking, you're interested in tackling a topic and uh, having a discussion about it. And so what's helpful about that is that we have a a uh, small university, and so it's easy to get to know your faculty. They are all here and all available. Uh, they all have office hours. And so having a good relationship with that faculty member can help open a lot of doors uh, when it comes time to asking for you know those letters of recommendation or uh, trying to get into the job market. And it's really not something you want to do after the fact. Uh, I struggled with this myself. It, I tried to get letters of recommendation and things like that from faculty members that I hadn't spoken to in a year or two. Um, and luckily, they knew me well enough from class to sort of remember who I was. But uh, you know, you really want to get in the door early, more or less, right? And so have those discussions, have those conversations where they get to know you, get to know that you're a active listener, that you're a, a, a thoughtful student. Uh, and then, you know, build those relationships from there. And so you want to do that by obviously participating in class, employing active listening, uh, engaging in the conversations, and also going to office hours and doing those same things. Um, and one important thing to note is that, you know, your faculty are here for you. This is a teaching institution, uh, and they're here because they want to teach and work with students. And so, uh, you know, if you keep that in mind, it can make the... Uh, Perhaps the idea of going and speaking with your faculty member a little bit less intimidating if that is uh, something that you're worried about. So now we're just going to summarize what we've been talking about today. So active listening requires your investment in what is being said or told to you. And this seems very straightforward, but it is probably the simple, deceptive you know, <laughs> tidbit that you want to take away is that you need to be invested in what is being said to you or told to you uh, if you want to retain it. Uh, that's just sort of, there's no really, there's no other way around it. You can't 
trick yourself into retaining information that you are not interested in. Um, and the true way to retain information is to actively engage with it, whether that's through summarizing, through restating, through clarifying, or acting, asking questions. Uh, so active listening is a skill that's going to follow you well after you finish your undergraduate degree and arguably will get even more important as you enter the workforce and need to, uh, you know, speak with your boss, let your boss know that you're listening. Uh, if, you're having, if you're having an interview, if you're, uh, you know, speaking with a, an accountant or anything like that, those are all, you know, hugely important that you listen and retain the information that's given to you in a conversation. And so... Being an active listener and an active learner is a way of viewing your education, right, as an opportunity for growth and not just a chore. Um, and this is probably one of the, this is the, the big takeaway that's a little hard to uh, sort of teach in a workshop, but you are here for a reason, right? So in middle school or high school, there was a government agency that made sure that you were at school for every hour of the day um, but now there's not right you're here because you want to be here ideally uh, and so you know thinking about your education in those terms is a really important way to start engaging with it uh, if you you know continue to see this is just something you have to do every day if it's not um, something you're passionate about it's going to be difficult to remain focused and remain engaged and continue on through graduation. Uh, but if you can find ways to engage with the material that you're studying, your peers and your professors, uh, you'll be surprised at how, uh, you know, quickly everything will sync up and you'll, you know, feel more engaged and more active in your education. Uh, so that's all I have for everyone. Um, thank you for joining me. My name's Eric. I'll be in the cave if you have any questions or comments or want to have a conversation and practice your active listening skills. Um, so yeah, stop by and see me, or you can uh, email or call me. All right. Thank you for joining us.